All right, well, first of all, thanks for uh, having me back this year. It's great to see you all. Uh, my name is Dan Staples, and uh, I work for Siemens. I'm going to be joined by George Morris in just a sec second, who works for Gravity Lab, and uh, we'll talk together about how to achieve digital transformation for startups, scale-ups, and SMBs. So you've no doubt heard of Siemens. We make a lot of stuff, right? We make windmills, we make trains. Probably the electricity in this room was generated by Siemens or transmitted by Siemens or the circuit breakers are Siemens. So Siemens is world-class engineering as we well know. But Siemens is a world-class software company as well. In fact, we're one of the largest software companies in the world, one of the top 10 software companies in the world. So we hope to be able to bring our experience to you in engineering and software today. And our vision is to create a better future where anyone can turn today's ideas and tomorrow's products and experiences. And we do this through something called Siemens Accelerator. Siemens Accelerator is a portfolio of software services and an application development platform where you can achieve digital transformation. And we do this a few ways. And the first is with the comprehensive digital twin. And I'll talk more about what that means in a second. Most of us think of the comprehensive digital twin, or the digital twin is like the CAD model, that's the digital twin, right? Well, there's a lot more to it than that. And of course, it's as well personalized, adaptable, and modern. So it will adapt to your needs. You can integrate it into other systems. We think very strongly about being flexible and open because as broad a set of tools as we provide, we also want to provide tools that can be integrated with other systems as well. And you need to think about it as not just mechanical CAD. When you come to this show, I think a lot of people are thinking mechanical CAD, additive, generative, and that's all cool stuff, right? But there's so much more to engineering. Electronics, IoT, manufacturing, simulation. There's really a whole universe out there, and Siemens Accelerator helps you to achieve digital transformation. So when I was talking about the digital twin, I said the word comprehensive, comprehensive digital twin. And what I mean by that is it is so much more than a CAD model today, right? So yes, you have a digital twin in the CAD model, but you also should have a simulation model, something that's predicting the performance of the real world, a simulation digital twin, if you will, and a factory or, or um, plant digital twin as well. How's the manufacturing process is going to work? And beyond that, you need to connect that all together. So the real world and the physical world. You might have IoT information coming from your factory floor or your devices in the field, and you want to be able to integrate that all back into the design process. So when we talk about a digital twin at Siemens, it's way more than a CAD model. It's a full digital twin, including design, manufacturing, simulation, IoT. It's all pulled together into one thing. And now as I explain this, I think you might be thinking, well, that's great, and that's for really large businesses, enterprises. And that's true. A lot of large enterprises are on their digital twin or their digital transformation journey. But there's a study done by IDC. They talked to small businesses around the world, and they said, tell us about technology. How, is it, how important is that to you? How about digital transformation, digital technologies? And fully 72% said they felt like it was something that gave them competitive advantage to level the playing field with the big companies. And that's pretty darn important. And I know a lot of companies here today and listening online are in fact small or startups. And this is very important technology for you to be aware of. And obviously you're taking the first step today or somewhere along your journey. So how do you get started here? I guess the first advice is to make sure any digital transformation you do is in the context of your strategy, right? So your company has a strategy of vision. Think about that before you start working on digital transformation because it will guide your thinking. And then like any change management process, you have to have champions in the process and you wanna take those small wins. So don't boil the ocean first thing. Take the small wins in digital transformation and then start to scale up. So where might you start with this if you're a startup and the answer would be Siemens Accelerator, right? So even though I spoke of Siemens Accelerator and all the different pieces that you might take advantage of, we are democratizing those pieces and bringing those even to startups. And a great example of this is Plastic Fisher. So Plastic Fisher makes a unique product that helps make our world better. So they have solved the problem of collecting river plastic before it reaches the ocean. And they've done this using Siemens products and Siemens Accelerator. And the results they've achieved are remarkable. I'm used to people coming up here and saying, you know, you're gonna save 20%, you're gonna save 30%, right? 
100% savings in design, 75% in manufacturing. So the, the manufacturing problem is being solved in 25% of the time, a quarter of the time it used to. Designs twice as fast. These are stunning numbers and the things you can achieve with digital transformation in the Siemens portfolio. And it's not just Plastic Fisher. There are companies all around the world doing this. Companies like Tremonia. Uh, Tremonia is uh, actually Latin for Dortmund, where they're located. Uh, and they make the Sprinter vans, right? They make the customized, they're the leading uh, minibus manufacturer in the world, the Sprinter vans that you may be familiar with. I'll talk a little bit more about them in a second. And we're going to talk to George from Gravity Lab. They do amazing, cool stuff. And so he'll give you the real world about how they're using Siemens Accelerator to make their life better and make your life better. Now, as we talk about these smaller businesses, there are larger businesses as well, you know, small, medium, large, SMB, and uh, then there's enterprises. And so if you look at SIM data, they say, well, the world's kind of broken into two different types of, of systems. And that's because not one size fits all, right? So there's design-focused MCAT and there's multidiscipline MCAT. And they each make up about half of uh, the, the marketplace. And so a, a particular CAD system tends to be one or the other. And the problem with this is that you very likely have a mixture of these things, a design-focused system and a multidiscipline-focused system. And most companies are doing this and may not even realize it. If you look at, for example, larger enterprises, I guarantee the people in this room who are larger enterprises have a mix of CAD systems. And it's not like something you wanted to do. Like you may have NX as your primary design tool, and that's a great thing, and it's your, you know, it's your lead design tool. But somewhere around your company, you bought another company that's using a different product. And you're having to integrate those two things together. You're having to work with different vendors, different contracts, different licensing systems. And there's just a whole lot of hidden complexity in dealing with having two different types of systems and the fact that they're not integrated together. And the same is actually true for SMBs. A lot of SMBs are part of a supply chain. So uh, George, who's going to talk in a second, he comes from motorsports, right? And motorsports NX is the gold standard. And so a lot of people who are in that supply chain need to be NX compatible. And so you may be using a design-focused system and having to go through a lot of gyrations to integrate into that supply chain. And those same costs exist for you that I described that enterprises have. But today I'm here to tell you that there's a great solution to this, and that's Siemens Mechanical Design. So Siemens Mechanical Design is a unique offering. You might be thinking, OK, I need a design-focused system, or I need a multidiscipline system, or I have a disparate set of systems. When you buy Siemens Mechanical Design, you don't get NX, you don't get Solid Edge, you get both. And so any seed of mechan Siemens Mechanical Design that you buy, you get both systems, and you get, therefore, the benefits of having both systems. And it works as one seamless whole. And not only that, we've also introduced recently something called value-based licensing. And what value-based licensing does is allows you access to other pieces of the portfolio without having to buy all those other pieces. So you're able to, for example, access uh, human factors or simulation and without having to buy all the individual pieces. There's over 100 different pieces that you can access without having to buy all the different products. So Siemens Mechanical Design is unique in the industry, NX and Solid Edge, one package. Nobody to talk to, nobody to uh, you know, trade in or, or uh, have other complicated issues with. And so I spoke about Tremonia a few moments ago, and they're achieving real world productivity with this. So 45% faster development cycles and 38% faster design experience. And it's just generally a more harmonized process that they're working with. And all this is enabled by accelerators I spoke about at the beginning. Again, it's not just mechanical design, electronics, IoT, operations, manufacturing, and so on. But I could sit up here and talk all day, a very long time, about Siemens Accelerator and what it offers to you. But I think it's better that we hear from folks who are actually using the software. And so I want to introduce to you George Morris from Gravity Lab. And George will take us through just a little bit about how they're using the Siemens Accelerator portfolio and what it brings to the party for them. George, join me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. I'm George Morris. I'm head of design and engineering at Gravity Lab Aerospace Services. My background is mainly in motorsports. That's Formula One and sports cars. 
but I've also worked in marine, defence, aviation, and on something called Bloodhound, which was a rocket and jet-powered land speed record car. I'm at my best when immersed in CAD, stiffing apart by 20%, or removing the last 10% in weight. Oh, I'm not at my element, standing here, speaking to a group far more intelligent than myself. Please be kind. I'll give a short introduction. I don't know which one I press. There we go. Of who Gravity Lab are and why we do it. Gravity Lab offer research and testing services in space and microgravity, delivered by proprietary vehicles. We're currently 25 people based in Norfolk with offices, workshops, fuel and electronic labs, and the largest hybrid rocket test facility in the UK. We're currently moving to a new building and we're bringing the majority of our manufacturing of metallics, composites, ceramics and electronics in-house. Sorry, technophobe here. There we go. Gravity Lab is developing initially two vehicles to provide access to microgravity. Louis, our patented UAV drop pod that offers five seconds of microgravity and Isaac, a single stage hybrid sounding rocket offering five plus minutes of microgravity. These technologies put Gravity Lab at the front of the queue for new markets, such as Velio for long duration microgravity or deploying communication satellites. Some quick figures. Louis has flown to 6,000 feet with a drone. It is then released and accelerated with electric ducted fans to get up to five seconds of microgravity. A parachute then deploys and Louis is steered back close to the launch site for recovery and redeployment. Louis can then be reflown up to 20 times in one day and we have the ability of testing in many locations. Isaac has an apogee of 250 kilometers. It reaches hypersonic speeds of between Mach 5 and Mach 6. The skin temperature at those speeds is about 700 degrees centigrade with the nose tip reaching 1,700 degrees centigrade. Microgravity is about six minutes, so basically it goes up, it turns round and comes back down again. On the way down, a parachute is deployed and the rocket is recovered. A full strip down and rebuild is needed before relaunch. More than 80% of our rocket can be reused and with a small fleet, multiple launches can be achieved over a short period. So why test in microgravity? Well, firstly, there's material testing. Gravity is an ever-present force. Removing gravity from material property testing gives clearer and more accurate results. The best example I have is testing materials on Earth is akin to having a conversation in a nightclub. If you remove the music, then everything becomes easier to understand. There's biotech and pharmaceutical. Again, a really complex subject, but a quick explanation of relevancy. A lot of research is going into development of biofuels. Some bacteria have been shown to start rapidly splitting and multiplying in microgravity environments. This growth then continues when back on Earth. On the death of this bacteria, it then decays to form a type of methanol that can be used as a true sustainable biofuel. Lastly, please remember that over 80% of our climate data comes from satellites. More accurate and focused data will help humanity manage and potentially solve some of the issues we have created. Finally, there is space qualification. There's a great need for testing of hardware destined for orbit and beyond. I think we've all seen rocket launches and can understand the extreme violence that a payload undergoes. The hostile nature of space also puts hardware under unique environmental conditions. Satellites are being deployed at a faster rate than ever before. However, 50% of these fail in orbit. And 75% of those failures occur within seconds of being deployed. If you want to truly frighten yourself, there are various online maps showing all the space debris that humans have left in our orbit some of it dating back to the 1940s. Lab testing does not provide an appropriate representation, representation of in-life service. 
we can offer payload validation via short duration space access on a suborbital vehicle. This is much quicker and cheaper way of reaching high RTRLs, accessing a service within a short period and space qualified components and assemblies. I am a design engineer. I've been tasked by my directors to design, manufacture and deliver vehicles ready for flight. I lead an amazing team of talented engineers who are helping me in this process. I am in the very lucky position because in reality, I'm starting with a clean sheet of paper, no legacy. This enables me to choose the ultimate method to reach my targeted goals, be that people, software or machinery. I could speak for hours about the engineers I have and the machinery and facilities we're putting in place. But today, Siemens have kindly let me talk to you about my software choices. I'm inherently lazy. Let me explain. I want to do a job once, and I want to do it right, and I do not want to have to revisit the same problems over and over again. As head of engineering, I have to employ the smartest engineers, then enable them to complete their work with the best tools available. They need to have an idea, picture the finished result in their head, and be able to transfer that idea and convert that into CAD with no dilution of their original thoughts. Once in CAD, the design needs to be analyzed, be that structural or thermal. This might need a couple of loops to get the finished part. The part then needs to be made, be that additive or subtractive, in our case, probably both. Finally, the part needs to pass inspection before testing, assembly, then launch. Siemens allows me to do this in one family of software. I've used most of the CAD programs on the market. NX, in my opinion, is the best. I would accept arguments that there are other that excel in certain areas, but as a package, NX is hands down the best. But NX is not just a CAD package. It also does additive, topology, analysis, composites, electronics, CAM, and inspection, and so much more. When I transitioned my team over to NX, I expected to spend the majority of my time helping and tutoring them. Yes, they needed some help, but far less than I expected. Within days, they're back up to their previous productivity, and within a fortnight, there was a noticeable difference in the quality and detail of their work. It doesn't end there. SimCenter utilizes the best solvers, be that FEA or CFD, and it is fully integrated into NX. If you need a part thicker, or you can make it lighter, easy. You just change, you change at the same time, it works together. Likewise, for CFD, you can run a list of parameters to optimize the shape quicker, with less computing power, and more accurately. We build a lot of our rockets out of composites. SimCenter runs FiberSim. I don't have enough time today to explain FiberSim, but in short, if you design or manufacture composites, you need FiberSim. I would need my manufacturing leads here to help explain why they think NX CAM is the best. There's tool path generation, tool wear, surface quality, and speed are probably the main points. Time spent programming is often overlooked, as is the major cost, as it is a major cost in machining. Having CAM built into NX speeds up this process and allows for better control over design for manufacture. This directly leads to a lower tooling cost and introduces the right first time mentality. Having a virtual machine embedded into CAM greatly reduces a chance of scrap parts or worse, a broken CNC. All our machines come with Siemens operating software. I said earlier, we are doing additive. The eagle-eyed here will notice that the picture is not a machining tool path. Um, it's an additive build path showing temperature. The machines we're buying will be able to metal print um, in five axes, a diameter of 1,250 millimetres by 900 millimetres. That's potentially two tonnes in weight. 
we can then at the same time machine it back to within five microns of tolerance. For plastics, we're going a little bit bigger with a build envelope of eight by three by 2.5 meters with the ability also to machine in five axes. Both of these machines have NX additive software standards and it is customized to each machine's need. There is Team Center. It is a PLM system, but not just for CAD. It does what it says in the tin. It manages documents. It creates part numbers, controls revisions, and the release process. There is Team Center Share, which allows collaboration between teams, allowing non CAD users to look at, measure, and review CAD. The best bit is you don't notice Team Center, it just works. It doesn't hinder the design process. And this, I believe, is key. I am not joking when I say I've worked for a company where the document management system slowed down the design process to an extent it was calculated that engineers were losing an hour a day. I repeat, every engineer was non-productive for over an hour every day. It was a large company as well. Last but no means is Polarion. Polarion is a unified application lifestyle management solution. I think that in reality, Polarion can be whatever you want it to be. As an aerospace company, we have many forms of compliance. We use Polarion to manage this, as well as task creation with full reporting. This streamlines the planning elements within the company, giving charts and dashboards for each user in the areas they need to use, with full roles and permissions. Polarion gives us full traceability. It controls test steps and test runs, stock control, stock planning, machine time and utilization, everything in one program. And it talks and is able to bring in elements from all of NX and Team Center. I joked that the board of directors have a traffic light at the top of their computer screen. Green means they can go and play golf. Amber means they should have a look at what's going on. And red, they should panic. Of course, with Polarion, they can actually drill down to exactly where the blockage or problem is. Most likely, it's with a purchase order sitting on their desk that hasn't been signed off. So to round this up and put the record straight, I do not work for Siemens. I'm not being paid to be here today. I'm just a customer. A customer uses a family of products that enables me to deliver a product with the minimum blockages to my team. And to simplify my message, having one family of software that is the very best in all areas, software that communicates seamlessly across all departments, reducing design, analysis, manufacturing, testing, and assembly, allows Gravity Lab to design and build microgravity vehicles in less time with less staff. If anyone wants any more information, please come and speak to me afterwards, but I'll leave you with a short video. Thank you, George. Really uh, great stuff. Um, I'm an engineer at heart. Um, thank you, George. Any, um, any last thoughts you want to leave the audience with? If you... So, yes, yeah, Team Center basically, so Siemens products allow us to do our job. All right. You know, it's as simple as that. Whether, you know, if you're a small, medium business, having the whole portfolio, being able to talk and being able to scale that with our growth is key. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, George. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Just to uh, round things out here, uh, for me, it's very inspiring to, to hear George talk. I'm an engineer at heart myself and the, the pro kind of problems they're solving and really how they've been able to do that through technologies and digital transformation is amazing to me. Being able to you know, 3D print two tons and machine it down to five microns, that like blows my mind. And uh, it's super exciting to hear that kind of thing and how Siemens Accelerate enables them to do so. So to close things up here, I invite you to learn more. If you have your camera, you can grab a, a snap of this QR code, but also develop 3D is pretty good about getting this up on the web. Probably, I would say in the next week or two, it'll be up on the web and you can grab the QR code then. Or it's easy to remember, Siemens.com, Siemens-Mechanical Design. 
And what is Siemens Mechanical Design? It's a single package. You get NX, you get Solid Edge, both at a very affordable price point, and you can use either for whatever application you might need. You can also get value-based licensing access to over 100 products without having to buy the individual products. It's a unique offering in its industry, and I suggest you take a deep look at it. And we're really here to help. Siemens Accelerator is here to accelerate your digital transformation. Thanks so much.